it's, it's an incredibly important time to be in, in the field of biomedical engineering in the sense that now is really when all of these minds, not just from, from Kings, but from everywhere, are just sort of coming together to collaborate and to find different solutions that, at, that not too long ago were, were not possible. Our area of research um, is focused on understanding brain development in Down syndrome and so we're using MRI to image uh, fetuses and babies to help us understand both structure and function of the brain and in a separate set of experiments we're also looking at cellular changes that occur in the brain using different models. We uh, hope that findings from these studies can help better uh, inform parents as well as help improve outcomes in uh, babies and children with Down syndrome. Um, in a room with people from different backgrounds bringing different skill sets it's going to be a lot of different ideas and a lot of different um, views about the same idea. So if you're trying to solve a particular problem then you have someone coming in with a medical background, you have someone coming in with a physics background, someone coming in with a computer science background and they're all going to look at this problem differently and offer different solutions to it and when you merge all of the solutions together that's when you actually get the best possible solution for this problem. My primary area of research is for surgical robotics, looking at ophthalmology, trying to treat diseases such as age-related macular degeneration. This is a illness where the macular a, degrades over time, a, causing blindness to the center of a person's vision. Being such a multidisciplinary a, school, you're able to get help and assistance from other areas of expertise, be that from people with medical imaging, mechanical or software engineering backgrounds. We are developing a soft robotic endoscope which can carry out medical intervention in the least invasive manner possible. Um, so the uniqueness of this system is it can provide the clinician the haptic sensation of the interaction. So it make the it, it can measure the uh, contact force at the tip and make the clinician feel this soft endoscope like an extension of his arm. So it can uh, really feel what is going on at the tip of the endoscope. So this has never done before. Steve Nieder, I'm Professor of Biomedical Engineering here at King's College London where we're based inside St Thomas's Hospital. So the work that we do is really looking at how we can use computer models of the heart to encode known physics and physiology and use those models to be able to predict how patients will respond to therapy. Hi, I'm Hassan and I'm a PhD student in the School of Biomedical Engineering and Imaging Sciences. So my research is involved in looking at sudden cardiac death syndrome. There's over 80,000 conditions in the UK um, and one of the treatments is using implantable cardioverter defibrillators or ICDs. The problem is, is these aren't given to everyone and a lot of the sudden cardiac deaths actually happen outside of the patients that are given ICDs. So it's really about giving the right treatment to the right patient and finding new ways of stratifying risk for clinicians. I lead the software engineering team of GiftSurge, which is a seven-year research grant that aims to develop new surgical technology, which will aid in the treatment of congenital problems in the womb.
We are currently working on a number of different projects, including ultrasonic needle tracking. In ultrasonic needle tracking, the aim is to track the tip of a surgical tool, such as a needle, and our group has developed a new sensor. We, as the GiftCert software engineering team, are developing the software that's going to operate this technology. And this software package is called Extensible Sonographic Navigation, or Sononav in short. My area of research is currently looking at what's focusing on ventricular tachycardia um, and ischemia. Patients with ischemia often get fibrosis in their heart and this can lead to re-entering waves and fibrillation of the ventricles. My research is aiming to make the link between how fibrosis and the thickness of fibrosis relate to the membrane voltage of the heart when you read it. In the school, we've, there's a small team of all related of research staff all focusing on um, heart disorders and research into those. And collaborating with those gives us, although it's a similar field, gives us a wide range of sort of opinions and viewpoints to go and pursue these avenues of research because one person might be focusing on one area and they'll give you an insight into your area without necessarily knowing it. Hello, I'm Christos Bergeles. I'm a senior lecturer at the School of Biomedical Engineering and Imaging Sciences and the deputy director of our PhD program on surgical and intervention engineering. All of our graduates are actually uh, having massive employability success. They are uh, readily uptaken by these companies we collaborate with, but not only that, not only by companies in the healthcare domain, but because the fundamental science we're doing needs to combine computer science, mechatronics, system integration. They are also able to be uptaken by, by companies that do research and development in aligned domains. Research in surgical and intervention engineering is by definition highly collaborative. It requires the input from surgeons and uh, clinical collaborators in order to understand what problems we need to solve. It requires computer scientists to come up with algorithms that can solve this problem. It requires hardware development engineers to understand how to build devices and how to make them work. And system integration engineers that are trying to put the algorithms and devices together and make you know, whatever we create execute a plan and work uh, with the intended purpose.